Hello guys, welcome back to the bench and today we're going to go over Mr. Hobby Aqueous Acrylic Lacquer Paints. Uh, these are very similar to uh, Tamiya. Let me see if I can get my Tamiya jars here. Very similar. It's the same thing. It's uh, an acrylic yet you get the uh, the flammable logo on your acrylics meaning it's not a true water based acrylic. Uh, meaning it has a little bit of a solvent in it too. And uh, you'll even see that on there thinner with the uh, the, salt, the flammable logo. Um, this is more alcohol than anything else. But uh, this is what their regular lineup is. This is their lacquer. I've already gone over these. I love these paints. These are in the same size jar. And they're, you can't confuse them because the label is completely different. You got your Mr. Hobby, Mr. Color, and giant uh, yellow and blue. These aqueous have this... Uh, light blue color and you can't miss the aqueous all across the front and they're all numbered right above uh, these these are the I think this is the newer blend when you see these labels they changed the blend a couple years ago to perform better um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to thin them I mostly airbrush mine but uh, we're gonna brush paint some too and with that we're gonna use the retarder as I used for uh, my Tamiya brushing Tamiya brushing and we'll paint uh, some spoons. We'll do one with and without a, a primer on it. Now, for thinning them, um, you can use their own, which is actually kind of hard to find, believe it or not. This took a while for me to get, and, and uh, uh, not quite sure why, uh, but it's in stock everywhere now at the time. I think Spray Sprue Brothers is where I got this, but Spray Gunner's got it now too, I believe. But um, you really, you can skip this and go with the all magical Mr. Color Leveling Thinner 400. This is great. This is their regular thinner. What they do is they reverse the lettering from yellow to blue, blue to yellow. So yeah, you get the leveling, meaning it's got a touch of the retarder in it. So when you airbrush it, it, it takes a little longer to dry and it levels out beautiful, removes all the orange peel look and all that. Um, I use this for everything. I've, I've thinned just about all of my lacquer based paints, all my acrylic hybrid paints that to me is and whatnot with this. Um, matter of fact, I go through it a lot. I gotta get another bottle because I use it for everything. And we're gonna use that for this too. Now you can also use alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. This is a 91%, but what happens is it works just like it does with uh, Tamiya, but it dries really fast. You gotta be ready for what you're doing. Maybe if you're doing a whole kit, a whole Gundam in red or something, and you, you lay it down, you, you, but you got to be know what you're doing. You got to have everything perfect because it's going to dry that fast, and then uh, it'll give you some trouble with the tip dry too. Whereas this um, gives you a lot more leeway as far as that. So I mean, the cheap way out is this if you want, and but then you start to pile on a little bit because you want to add a retarder to make it more like the leveling thinner. So now you're buying two products again for the price of one. Um, I'm showing all your options, but I personally always will go down two. The Mr. Leveling Thinner 400. That's why I only buy the big jar too because it's all I use. Now the other difference is this Rapid Thinner. This is made for metallics. And whenever you spray metallics, I do like to use this, but you gotta, like I said, you gotta know what you're doing. Probably you do smaller parts because it even says right on it, drying speed when airbrush is used is faster than with regular thinner. It says it right there. What it does is it captures the metallic paint closer to the surface of the plastic of the item that you're painting when leveling it the the weight of the metal flakes actually will sink below and just give you a little bit less luster and uh, not as much as a, a nice shine a metallic shine as you would want but the rapid thinner dries it fast holding the uh, the metallic flakes at the top you know it is I mean it's known as it's, it's a quick drying thinner for mr. color uh, and this works too with these also so what I'll do is I'll pick out one or two metallics and uh, we use that when we thin it with that. Now, you can thin it with anything I just showed you. For here, I'm only going to use this. It just speeds up time for me. And it's what I use anyway. And I highly recommend you guys use it yourself. But we will use this for a metallic. And But you can go out and get yourself this. Um, personally, I think this is rubbing alcohol. Maybe with a couple other solvents thrown in. I'm smelling it now. I mean, it smells the same as this. Identical as that. And... Um, when I brush paint, I told you guys I'm going to show you how to brush it. Um, I just took the uh, the alcohol and put it in the cup. We'll clean the brush with alcohol. And uh, that's what we'll do there. Because um, that works fine for that. 
and uh, that'll save you money and not I'd rather save the money and use my uh, thinner for uh, thinning the paint for the airbrush um, you can go with a 50 50 mix on this and keep it simple it'll work beautifully this is a three millimeter needle we're gonna use my uh, Gunsy PS 270 pro con for this we're gonna go about 20 psi uh, you can even go less than that 15 some guys go with 10 um, and take their time you don't have to go that low uh, what I do is you can mark your jar your cups I, I've I do this so often now that I've got it down but you can see right at the bottom you put your paint into there and use this one over and over again for your thinner because you use the same mark over and over there's your 50 50 or you can also use the uh, pipettes and mark them off and uh, yeah I, at this point I can use my eye because I've been doing it uh, that much you guys see me all the tests and all the different paints once you get it down you realize uh, uh, your eyes are just as good as uh, the measurements at that point uh, you just want it to be the consistency of skim milk and you can tell that when you swirl it around the the thinness of it and sometimes I like to drag and the paint onto the side of the cup and see what if it leaves a bit of a residue as it runs down then that's perfect um, all right guys let me pause this and we'll uh, let me get this airbrush hooked up at the booth and then I'll show you we'll mix ratio of uh, we'll do a mix ratio of one because it's gonna be the same for all of them and I'll pick a few colors and then we'll show you how they lay down and then cleaning the airbrush we're gonna use uh, a cheap lacquer thinner so you don't use the good stuff the leveling thinner this is perfect for cleaning it out and you can even throw an acetone through your brush with this it'll, it'll clean it right out perfect but this stuff is cheap I get this at Lowe's and the, and I think Walmart is what I got this last can at when I see it I just grab it you know this all the acetone I keep both on hand all the time anyway let me pause the camera let me get a couple colors picked out let me put this on the booth let me turn on the air compressor and we'll get started All right, guys, here we are. We are set up to go. Um, I'm going to do a few colors off camera. I think I'm going to do these colors on camera. This red, just straight up red, number three. One of my favorite colors, uh, orange yellow, 24. Uh, silver, eight. We'll use the uh, rapid thinner for that. I love this color, steel red. Even though it's not really reddish, but it's, it's a great metallic color number 38 and we'll try a clear I'll put a clear over one of my silver bases clear blue number 93 all right uh, I've mixed this one already in prep um, I'm gonna do all of them once I turn off the camera and head to the booth but I want to show you guys the 50 50 you don't have to go more than that because this paints a little thinner than the usual paint that I work with but you go to your mark at 50 I call it 50-50, you know, they're both the same mark. I took the thinner, Mr. Leveling Thinner. I went to the blue mark on here, too. Now, I can use this cup over and over. That's why I'm just going to mark one for that, you know. And uh, stuff's very easy to work with. You don't have to go crazy um, worrying about exact amounts. You can go more, you can go less. But I personally, you don't have to go more than 50-50 with this. You can even go 60-40, 60 paint and uh, 40 thinner. Now, what you want is... Here's the consistency. Can you see it? It's, it's, it's got that skim milk consistency. It's a little lighter than regular whole milk. So, milk non-milk users out there, I'm not sure what to use as a reference. However, watch when I pull the, the paint up to the side of the cup. So it leaves a trail, yet it's running down, but you're still leaving pigments behind, is, is how I'm trying to explain it. Let's try it again here, here, yep. It just leaves the trail of paint slightly behind. That's the consistency we're looking for. And I also like to use my sticks twice. So I break my sticks in half. And uh, same with this. This came out perfect. Same way. Pull up the paint. That's it. It leaves that little trail behind. Absolutely perfect once you get it to that point. All right. Let me thin out the rest. I'll bring them all over to the booth. And um, we're going to show you how great this stuff goes on. Excellent paint. We'll see you at the booth. All right, guys, here we are at the booth. I preloaded already with the red, red and number three. And um, I want to take a tester here, so grab your cardboard. Coming out good. Look at that, beautiful. All right. Now I'm going to go over straight plastic, no primer. Let's see what we get. 
Now it's not a true acrylic, it's not a true lacquer. So uh, obviously it's in between. I don't think you gotta use the slow, slow method that I use with my, uh, my acrylic method where you flash dry it. You can, but you see it covers really good. It doesn't really get that, uh, it doesn't go on like runny at all. I got it set for a 20 PSI. As I said, a lot of guys like to go 10 to 15, which seems personally pretty light to me. But um, I do like these paints quite a bit. They're almost foolproof, just like my, uh, just like the regular lineup of theirs, the Mr. Color lineup. Look at that. I mean, look at that. And it's really durable once it dries for a long time. But uh, check that out. All right. What we're going to do is let's see how it covers over something dark. I'm curious. I'm doing this with a test I'm doing coming up with uh, white. I'm going to test all the white paints to see who covers the best, you know. But again, red should always go over white. Any of your bright colors, your blues, your yellows, greens, all should go over uh, getting more of a brown here. It is covering it, though. Nice, glossy, smooth finish, though. Look at this. Now I can layer this to the point where it's going to come out just like the white spoon, probably. Now you lay down a black primer, you're going to get a completely different looking paint. That's for sure. But look how beautiful it lays down. That's a drastic difference from the first one. Look at that. <laughs> that's the intended color, is it? Uh, anyway. Um, yeah, that's it. If it goes on great, let's try a little smooth line up front. Let's try it again. doesn't splatter beautiful anyway uh, let me clean this out as I said I'm gonna clean it out with a lacquer thinner blow it through quick and uh, come back to the next color Oop, bump the camera a little bit guys here we go number 24 orange yellow oops there we go you guys like my new light I put in the booth uh, well, it looks different here than here let's check it out without it let's see, uh, let's see. Try with the light. Yeah, not bad either way. That's a rechargeable light. It lasts a long time. I go a week, or even more, before it needs recharging. Nice yellow, huh? Wow, what a nice yellow. Orange yellow, I should say. Or is it yellow orange? Nope, orange yellow. Orange comes first in the name. lighting is better at the bench but uh, alright guys I'll move on to the next color which I think is a metallic so we'll see how the rapid thinner works with the silver let's see you back in a second all right guys next up is number eight silver there we go I'll do some over a primer spoon too but let's try uh, on camera we'll just do this straight over plastic oops I hit the camera in an awkward spot. Oh, it goes on nice. It goes on real nice. Wow, look at that. First time I'm using this silver from them in this lineup. I used some of their other metallics, which were pretty nice before this test. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's it. And you can't see it really good here. I'll show you under the lights of the bench. 
Wow, it came out great. All right, let's go on to the steel color and uh, then the clear. All right, guys, next up is steel red. Uh, don't know what that color means, but let us try it over primer. I'll do it in reverse. I'm trying them all on primer and uh, just plastic. Goes on quick. Clings really good. Wow, this is a real nice color. Wow, this is this is a great frame color for Gundams. What a great color. I hope you guys can appreciate it here. Wow, it's awesome. You know what? Let's see how it goes on white. This is just a white spoon. Yeah, it looks like it covers the same. That's why a lot of these, you don't really need a primer. Unless the unless you're painting it over a blue plastic, then you want to get it, you know, to all look the same. But, uh, yeah, that's it. Look. A little light on the edge here. Look at that. Look at that. This is a beautiful color. What a nice color. Wow. This if you got any nice control, like I did the red on the cardboard. Some of these metallics are tricky. This is turned way up. I mean, I would turn this way down. There we go. To get a much finer line. You know, like pencil marks. Great airbrush. You can just dial it when you need it while you're working with it. Anyway, let's do the clear blue over some chrome. And uh, then we'll wrap this baby up. All right, guys, to wrap this up, we're going to go with uh, clear blue, number 93. I have a chrome spoon. I keep spares. Here's a bright white base from uh, uh, Mr. Color. They make the bright white base in the spray can. And I got this gold. Let's see how it looks over some gold. But uh, anyway, let's see what we get. I don't. Have, this isn't the perfect base. Uh, you know, I, it's here because uh, it's got a little specs and stuff in it and, you know I, I keep it aside for testing my uh, my clears my clear colors before I go ahead and lay them down on a kit the clear is going to go down a little different from the others almost like the uh, acrylic method where we got to air dry it but what I'm going to do is just set it aside because we're going to do it on a few different colors here Going over white, we're going to actually see the true color that it is without the candy effect. See? It's like the color of the cap, just about. All right. Let that dry. Ooh, out of my reach. Let's try it over the gold. I don't know what I'm gonna get. Oh, look, I splattered. I gotta watch out how I'm pulling the trigger. Lower air pressure on this, on the clairs too. I forgot to lower it a little bit. All right. Back to the chrome. Oh, compressor is turning on. There we go. Ah, looking good now. Look at that. Yes. Very nice. Wow. Excellent. All right. Let me let this dry. I'll finish off the other ones, and we'll head back to the bench. I sprayed a few more off camera, so I got more colors to show you, and uh, I'll show you how to clean out this airbrush, too. All right, guys. Back at the bench. I'll show you how we clean it out. 
Uh, you can see I label my jars lacquer and acetone. I use a little bit of both. Uh, mostly lacquer. If I'm using lacquers, then I'll flash off again at the end with a little bit of acetone. I've already put some in here. You can see it. Swish it around. All right. We're going to blow it out through here in my uh, my jar. This is a Mr. Hobby, Mr. Uh, GSI Creos airbrush jar. Get out what you can. Now what I do is I like to get a paper towel, blast it on there so it gets on the needle. Now, let me show you what I like to do. I get my pointy Q-tips and I swirl around to get it on the edge of the cup. Clean out good. All right? I'm going to dump it out. I can even put it right into the cloth I'm using because I can wipe around the edges. Clear it out and here's what we do. Go again in with some lacquer. And on this particular airbrush, all you do is loosen it, not the protective cap, the, the needle itself. And you can see, without me blocking the tip, just applying air and pulling back, back flushes it on its own. You don't have to you know, force it to do it. It does it on its own. And this is clear, so this is really easy. But if I was doing a metallic, you don't want to tighten this and then blow it in again. Because what you're doing is you're getting all the metallics the paint out of it so after you're doing this you want to dump it out you know either in your cup uh, I keep a thing with kitty litter and I'll dump it in there now you're gonna put the lid I mean you're gonna put the needle back on tight and against the cloth if you're not blowing any color you're clean I'll go through all the colors like I did to show you guys and then when I'm done, I turn off the camera, I break it down and clean it off. See this blue on the protective needle? That doesn't really affect the immediate, you know, because that's not on the needle. It's just on the protective. We've cleaned the needle off. But once I'm done, I like to pull the needle out, go over it quick, quick, uh, get a little tighter with my uh, my cotton swabs, and then uh, we're good to go. So there we are. I'll clean it the rest of the way, like I said, more thoroughly once I'm off camera. But what I just showed you guys is perfect for... Uh, your spring like I did several colors in one session that'll get you that'll get you fine right through and uh, I highly recommend uh, I'm getting up to show you guys I highly recommend these q-tips awesome I'll try and put a link below one end is rounded one's pointed these are made for cleaning guns and handguns and whatnot so they're really tightly wound they, they don't fray at all into the airbrush I love these things and they were cheap too so I'll put a link for that and uh, yeah uh, the, keeping your stuff in these jars has been terrific. I've had these jars for almost a year. I got these at Hobby Lobby, and they seal nice. Uh, they're solvent resistant. See it? And I just keep my lacquers in there instead of opening up that stupid can every time. Sorry about my arm. And uh, I'm always ready to go. Anyway, let me pause the camera, get these off the table, and we'll go over the colors. All right, guys. I was going to show you how to brush it, so let's go ahead and uh, go through that quick tutorial. Um... All right, it doesn't matter here on ratio so much as this is straight out of the jar. We're going to go with black, straight black. And uh, Mr. Retarder, mild. Oh, there we go. Mild is what I use. So with this, ratio-wise, it doesn't matter. Just put some in. That's good. Trust me, it doesn't matter too much. And I say 10 drops to what I showed you in there if you want to. Nail down the ratio, stir it up decently. I'm not using measurements at all, so I got these clear little shot glasses from uh, uh, the Dollar Tree. All this stuff comes in handy from the Dollar Tree. All right, that's it. I got a bunch of brushes here. We use this cheap one here, it's very soft, it's good for black. Like I said, we got plastic, uh, raw plastic, and we have. Uh, Primer. Right, let's see what we got. Stuff brushes beautifully. The brush I'm using has a point on it, which I should try the other brush in a second. But yeah, we'll try this over primer anyway. Try not to go off camera. It's tough because the camera's in a weird spot for me, you know. There we go. It's going to dry thoroughly. 
a lot of these bubbles will actually come out too, I think. All right, that is over the primer. All right, let's try it over plastic, bare plastic. Let's try a different brush. Uh, use, I'm using uh, alcohol, rubbing alcohol to clean this off. See it? Takes it right off. So it's good to save you money. Don't forget to use my close pin trick to float the brush so it doesn't bend the tip. All right. We'll go with a big fat brush here. Yeah, this is a Model Master, I believe. Yep, Model Master. Grab these while they're still around because all the Model Master stuff is gone. You know? Yeah, see, I can really cover a lot of surface with this. But it's like a house painting brush. I'm going to paint a room with this. See that? Now I'm doing this quick for the camera. If you take your time and you, you back over your strokes, you can get all the bubbles out. The strokes should dry out. There we go. Anyway, cover that quick with this fat brush, huh? Well, uh, this one's a primer. I left it half so we can see it. And this is over the plastic. I'll put these in the dehydrator with the other spoons. And then we'll come back and go over the results. All right, guys. Back with the results. But first, I want to show you how I cleaned out that tip of the airbrush. See it? This is what the protector for the, the needle at the end. I dipped these... Uh, I dip these Q-tips, I use the pointy end in the acetone, and then I just twirl it around. See it? Fits in it perfect, comes out the other end, and it cleans all that off. I'll flip it around, dry it off with this end, and there it is, it's perfectly clean. So I didn't want to uh, leave that out, I wanted to show you how I clean the whole thing all the way through. Uh, while I'm painting, you know, the thorough breakdown, that's another thing. Alright, let me pause this camera and put that on the needle before I lose it, and we'll go over the colors. Alright guys, I put that back on the airbrush, and uh, alright, let's go with their colors, here we go. And this stuff is uh, really durable, this is number 3 red. Can you see, there's no orange peel, it's just perfect. And uh, this was dried in the, uh, the my humidifier, go watch my other video if you want to know what I'm talking about. And it's already durable, this was in it for 10 minutes, that's how good this stuff dries. There's the yellow. This is the yellow over primer, the much different color. See the gray primer? You get a whole different tone all together. This is silver. Now with this, we use the rapid thinner because it's a metallic. That's it over bare plastic. Beautiful, huh? Look at that. And this is it over a primer. It comes completely dull. It matches uh, the base. You can actually see the metallics in that more than this one. But this is its, I think this is its true nature over a shiny surface. Because it's this is a shiny silver, not a dull matte silver. Beautiful. Came out beautiful. This is red steel. No, wait. Steel red. I had it backwards. Number 38. This is it over bare plastic. Really nice color. This is the kind of metal color that I absolutely love. And this is it over primer. A little bit duller. Not as much depth. Again, I like it better over the pure white plastic. Look at that. That's a beautiful color. Durable, too, just like the red. It dried beautifully. Both of those use the uh, Rapid Thinner. All right, here is the clear blue. Very nice. This was over some junky chrome silver I had. It had little bits in it and stuff, so that's why I put it aside. See, that's why uh, I save these when I, I save some of the mistakes when I'm going quick for tests. I put them aside, and I know I'm going to use them later. And another test, and that's what I did with this. This is it over white. It had the black with the white over it, and I dropped it behind the bench, so I had to spray another spoon white. This is the actual color. It matches the lid, I guess. That's the actual color without a chrome base, but this is basically it's supposed to go over a nice base. This is it over my chrome party spoons that I get. This is how they come. These are at the Dollar Tree, and then here it is sprayed straight over it. These are great for testing quickly how your uh, clears are going to look. Look at that. This is like a silver base. This is a chrome base. You can see the difference right there. That's a great two-tone kit right there. If you put chrome and silver and spray it with the same blue, you're going to get a great effect. And for the hell of it, I sprayed it over metallic blue. I had a, uh, I think this is a Tamiya spray can of metallic blue, and I sprayed it over the metallic blue, which was already, and this, it gave it a whole different look. 
complete different look. This is it over the silver. This is it on its own. Yeah. So you can do all kinds of stuff with it. So that's all the airbrushed. And I got these here. I airbrushed off camera. This is 63 metallic blue green. A beautiful color. Look at that. Isn't that nice? And this has been drying a while because I've been testing it during the week. And this is going nowhere. It doesn't even leave a mark. It's just awesome. Um, let's try a masking tape test. Now that's a roll of masking tape, eh, guys? Look at that. Let's try a masking tape test quick just to show you. But this stuff is mad durable. All right, we'll put half of it on here. And this is sticky tape, too. This is the big one. You know? And we'll put it over the red, which we just did. Push it on there tight, too. This stuff is super durable. How nice is this color, though? 83. Huh? Metallic blue green. That's great. This is emerald green, number 46. Check that out. That's just over the spoon, the white spoon. Look at that. Look at the smoothness of it. And this is 88. Metallic, just metallic blue. Oh, it looks just like the jar there. Look at that. That's that Subaru blue, I say. The WRX Racing colors for Subaru. Look at that. It matches it great, too. It just came out just like it. It's a little lighter in person. A little darker here under the lights. And now let's look at the uh, brushed on. I took number two, black. And this is the one that we brush painted using Retarder Mild. Mr. Retarder Mild. And look at that. How cool is that? That's already dry. And I'm telling you guys, as I'm sitting here, this is about 20 minutes ago that I painted this. And this is it over the primer. Smooth also, but you got a duller effect. It matches the base a lot of times with this paint. Particularly the uh, the hybrid paints, the metallic, the metallic, the uh, acrylic lacquers. They really will match the base. If it's a dull base, you're going to get a dull paint. But look at how good that brush. You don't even see a brush stroke. Look. So it brushes great, as long as you use the Mr. Retarder. And... Um, that's it. That's the demo. Phenomenal paints. They have almost every color they have in the uh, Mr. Color lineup, as they do in here. All the main, main ones anyway, including that steel red, which I'm not quite sure is even in my Mr. Color lineup. I love that. And uh, that's it. That was it. I showed you how to do the airbrush, and we went over the whole thing. And uh, I like these paints. I recommend them highly. They're pretty inexpensive, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I'll put a link below where I get them. I get them out of Spray Gunner, I believe. I got a few places, but I'll put a link below where you guys can get them. I think my guys in Florida just got a whole ton of these in, so I think their stock is pretty good. Uh, as I said, go with this. You don't have to get both. You can just stick with Mr. Leveling Thinner. Uh, if you're going to do a lot of metallics, you know, I recommend grabbing Rapid Thinner also. Oh, I just hit Harrow. So, uh, but if you're only going to get one thinner, this is your thinner right here. And if... Uh, if you want to stick with theirs, theirs works good. Theirs actually works really good with the lighter colors. If you're going to spray the clears, um, this actually works really good with the clears or alcohol because it dries quicker, and you want to get your clears to dry quicker so they don't get that runny look. Uh, other than that, I would stick with all across the board Mr. Leveling Thinner. And it works with everything just about I've tested in my videos, so you're really going to get your money's worth. Now I'm going to pause the camera, guys. I want to show you this awesome kit I just got. Um, the other day and i'm really excited about it but uh i also i'm going to put a picture up of this chart that shows how you should uh you should thin your paints with the ratios i took a still shot it'll be at the end of this right when i end this here so you guys can pause it and use it as your reference this comes with the ultimate airbrush thinner these are out of uh, england uh, i got mine i think out of new hampshire but uh, the chart is what's most important it shows you your ratios of how you should thin your paints per brand i mark the ones that i have in, in my shelves that's why you see the dots there but uh, as i said after this you'll see i'll, I'll you can pause the screen because i'm going to put a photo up of it in the video so you guys can use it as reference i get a lot of questions about it anyway let me pause this quick clear this out so i can show you the kit i'm talking about here it is guys i got a kit of the nautilus from Twenty Thousand leagues under the sea i i i didn't realize this was out and I, I usually really am up on every kit that's out there but it's been out a while and it was out of print for a while, and they just reissued it and brought it back out again. And I just thought it was so unique. You guys can see it here. Look at that. Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. 
It comes with brass fittings, photo etched. The base is the squid from the movie and the novel, and it holds it up. You know, I mean, it's all painted gray hair, but I, I, I might go in and paint all this up to really match. And uh, it comes in a super thick cardboard, almost impossible to open box. Let me show you. As you can hear me on screen trying to open this thing. I just want to show you the quality of the mold here. Look at that. I haven't taken out of the box, but look at all the rivets, all the work here. Can you see the detail? into? Look at all these rivets. They, they molded into it. Just fantastic. Look at the work on this one. Look at all this. Oh, man. Just a phenomenal kit. It's a nice big size, too. I think it's around 60 bucks. And personally, it's worth it. You know, the squid is right here. It's in his own bag. The display stand is there. Here's all the brass fittings on the bottom here. Look at the brass fittings and the railings and whatnot. For a photo etch. It's just a unique... I love unique kits like this, you know. I, I, I love this kit. It's by Pegasus. Is the brand. See it? Um, I didn't get it at Amazon, but I'll put up a link if Amazon's got it. Uh, if you guys want one. I, I, just, I just love it. It's just so unique. And anyway, I wanted to show you guys that quick. And uh, if you didn't see my other community shot, uh, head over to uh, Hobby Lobby as they reduced all the Model Master paints that they have in stock. You know, it's regularly $6.29 to $1.57. I bought every one they had. And then they have all the little jars of paint. I had most already, which is too bad. But look at the price on those, $0.99. Cents. All right. This, you see the blue bar. That's acrylic. You see the red bar. That's your enamel. And this is an acrylic. Flat clear, you can always use clears, 99 cents. This is much more than that when it was uh, full retail. Here's the company that destroyed the brand. They bought, rust -Oleum bought testers and then destroyed, the, they got rid of the Model Master lamp. All that's going to be left is the little square bottles, and that, that's it. So grab these while you can. Um, also, I heard Michael's has some. I bought some of Michael's, but they didn't have as much as this, and they were 3 bucks, not $1.57. So if you've got a Hobby Lobby near you, get out there. If you have a relative that lives near one, have them grab them and send them to you. Because I got a ton of them. You know, I, I can't fit them all on the screen. You know, but I grabbed every one I could. And uh, a little, uh, little service announcement there. All right? Okay, guys. Thanks a lot for watching the video. I rambled a little too long at the end here. But please like it and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Because I have a bunch more to go. And we'll see you in a few days.